Hello, um, this video is about building your own cassette cable and I'll show sort of how to do that and how to um, hook it up to your TRS-80. I'm gonna use my Model 3 and I'm gonna hook it up to a Linux laptop but you can hook it up to Windows or Mac. Um, it's going to be a special cassette cable. We're not going to build the uh, full cassette cable that like you would have gotten from Radio Shack for a Model 1 or a Model 3. We're really only going to do the line that plays audio out into the, the TRS-80. I'll show you the diagram so you could make the whole thing. But unless you're going to really use a cassette, you really don't need the control line. So if you're just going to use a modern computer, you can get away with the input, the recording, and the output. Um, this cable is just going to be output so that we could assemble a program on a PC or a Linux machine and play the audio out to a PC, I'm sorry, to a real TRS-80 to test it. Um, a couple of things I'll note, um, we're not going to talk much about the ZMAC output in this video. We'll talk about that in the future. I'll show you an example off George's website, the bouncing ball demo, which is fun to show on a Model 3. Um, but on the host PC, uh, I suggest making sure the volume's pretty high. I mean, we're, we're kind of using more modern hardware than the cassette recorder, but we still have volume issues. So sometimes if things aren't working, it could be that you need to sort of crank the, the volume on the, on the PC. On the laptop I'm showing, the volume is cranked all the way to the top to make it work with the, with the Model 3. So um, now we'll start looking at doing the cable and I apologize for some of the footage, but I'm not much of a hardware guy. So um, enjoy and hopefully this will help you make your own cassette cable if you don't have one. So to get a schematic of the cassette cable, I found this on 8bitmicro.com. The interesting bit is the diagram, but you can read through it on the site. Um, we're only going to do the data out of the cassette. I do want to note on this diagram that this is showing the wiring as the soldering side of the DIN, not the, the plug part, but the back end of the DIN. And this is how we're soldering up. So I have a cheap Radio Shack um, speaker cable that has the right kind of plug on one end. Um, I'm going to use that. Uh, it makes some of the soldering simpler. And I'll hook that up to a DIN. One thing I want to say is the DIN are here are kind of cheap, so I'll have to come back to that as I actually solder it because you don't want to, they have like plastic filler. But these are good ones because the metal there's no plastic encasing like the original Z80 ones. So this cassette cable will work with a Coco or a Z80 TRS80 uh, cassette connector, which is which is nice. Yeah, the problem with the original like Radio Shack Model 1 cassette cables is the DIN connector has an outside plastic casing that you can't actually push into a Coco. So this kind of style we're making will work both with a Model 1, Model 3, Model 4, or a Coco, uh, no problem. So it's uh, fairly, um, you know, versatile. All right, so here I'm um, stripping off the, cut off the wire, and I'm stripping off the... Uh, the plastic outer side not too much very very small you'll see the din doesn't have a lot of room to solder these on I want to make one note the cables really long but that's super useful especially if your PC and your um, TRS-80 aren't super close on your setup so the long cable is actually quite useful all right now this is pretty important when now that we have the end stripped on both of these cables we want to tin these wires because we definitely want to be able to quickly attach them to the the din connector without melting the center thing so i'm sort of carefully heating this up and making sure i get solder on these wires a good tinning of these these wires now it's hard to see in this video, but once this is done, you can sort of clip off the ends of them to the right length they need to be for the for the DIN. So what I had to do is you want to sort of, I, I sort of tape the DIN to the edge of the desk so that it's lightly held. This Another idea would be if you have a female DIN connector, maybe plug it in to try and keep these pins in line so that when you heat this with the solder, you can see I'm holding the wire and it's going right into the DIN connector. Now the first one I'm going to solder is right at the center. So that will that's an easy one. That's ground. I have to make sure that's the outer barrel. And I'm going to just carefully heat it up. And not not too much, not too long on there, but I want a good connection and that's it. And the tip goes to the, uh, the, the one it showed in the diagram. 
Um, I've lined that up, which I think from looking from the bottom, it's the over to the right of the ground one over. Again, just sort of touch it on there, get it hot, and that's it. I don't want to melt the base. All right, what I had done, um, which is important, is I put a um, shrink wrap on the, the hot wire, and I'm going to slide that down. Um, once I disconnect the connector here, let's take that off. So I don't know if it can see it. Yeah, you can sort of see what I did. But there's a blue connector that I taped up uh, that's heat shrink. And I'm going to pull that down a little bit. I just took it off. It's hard. I can't see. Great camera work. There it is. I've pulled the, the heat shrink down, and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of heat. Not very much. You can see that'll just cinch it around so that I'm, I'm not going to short it out with the other solder connection if I had to so it's a little bit you could do that on each of them but I, I only did it on one now I have put two black heat shrinks already on there and I also have the, put the uh, the the outer housing um, your day is sort of ruined if you forgot to do that so make sure before you start soldering this that that's there now I'm double checking with the The multimeter that I've actually got, uh, no, sh I'm not shorting those two posts and that they're coming out the way they should. All right, so finally we just need to reconstruct the, um, the housing and slide up the covering. Um, there's two little tabs on mine that you sort of line up and push it in. Then the top one goes in. Hopefully this will stay in the camera. Uh, not so much. Realize whatever DIN you get might be a little bit different for a DIN 5. Um, just make sure, like I said, the big caution is don't forget to put the casing on the cable before you start soldering things up because then you have to unsolder it all and put it back together. All right, so we got that together. Um, once that's together, then I'm going to um, crimp the wire a bit. I can just use my things. I'm not going to overdo this, just enough to sort of give it a little bit of help to stay together. Don't go crazy here and short your wire out. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then I'm going to just slide up the top case. Hopefully I'll show that before we run out of footage here. There we go. Terrible camera work. All right, you can sort of see the casings back on there and we have a cable. All right, so we take the DIN side of the cassette cable and plug it into the back. This is a Model 3. There we go. All right, so take the other end I'm going to plug it into the laptop. If I try to play the cassette without doing that, it'll it'll make noise. So um, I'll plug it into the headphone jack on my laptop, and let's get the Model 3 ready. We want the high-speed cassette, so I'll just hit return, and we're back, and then we um, system, and we're going to load um, George Phillips' Model 3 bouncing ball, so I can just put B, um, and then we come over here, and hit play and we should see the stars that means the cassette cable is working good so um, the uh, the cast file that we loaded this could be out of ZMac or it's downloaded from George's website in this case is loading up on the computer we'll give it a sec when it finishes you just hit slash to actually run your program and we can see the um, the bouncing ball, I can stop it with the thing, and I can also like use the the numbers to change the the speed. It's a neat beam hacking demo, one of my favorites for the for the Model 3. Alright, and hopefully you have your own cassette cable and now you've seen at least one example of how it works. So uh, thanks for watching and um, good luck with your new cassette cable.